after studying this module, you shall be able to know or understand about the mechanism of secretion of saliva. Know the components of human saliva. Learn about the various tests for its identification. On average, a human being secretes 1 to 1.5 liters of saliva every day. It is a fluid largely composed of water with little amounts of electrolyte and enzymes. It is secreted by the parotid and the submandibular salivary glands in the mouth. Forensically, it is often seen in sexual assault cases. Saliva test can reveal certain disease markers, viral infections and the presence of therapeutic as well as illicit drugs in the body. Saliva samples can be analyzed from various types of surfaces such as body parts, paper, envelope, cigarette butts, plastic and glass bottles and metal cans etc. Saliva is an important evidence which can provide useful information about the personal contact of victim and the perpetrator. The presence of saliva can be ascertained by the starch iodide and the Fadabas test. Starch iodide and Fadabas tests are however do not confirm the presence of human saliva. They are merely the test for amylase activity regardless of whether that amylase has come from human or any other source. An advanced monoclonal antibody based test kit is used to identify the human specific salivary amylase with RSID. If a stain gives a positive reaction, then it is confirmed that the human saliva is present. In addition, ABO group antigens can also be detected in saliva if the person is a secretor. A secretor is an individual whose saliva and other body fluids contain ABO antigens. Approximately 80% individuals are known as secretors. Finally, since saliva may contain the buccal mucosa cells, it is possible to identify the DNA profile of the person in question using advanced DNA profiling techniques. Composition of saliva. It comprises the following components that is water, electrolytes, sodium that is present in lesser amount than the blood plasma, potassium that is present in amount greater than plasma, calcium present in similar amount to that of plasma, magnesium, chloride lesser than plasma, bicarbonate present in greater amount than plasma and phosphate. Then iodine that is present in amount of millimoles per liter and that is commonly greater than plasma but reliant on variable according to the nutritive iodine consumption. Mucus, mucus in saliva chiefly contains of the mucopolysaccharides and the glycoproteins. The antibacterial combinations that is thiocyanate hydrogen peroxide and secretory immunoglobulin A. Then we have epidermal growth factor or the EGF, uh, several enzymes. There are three main enzymes present in saliva that is alpha amylase or tylen produced by the SNR cells of the parotid and the submandibular glands 
which initiates the absorption of starch. It is an ideal pH of 7.4. Then comes the uh, lingual lipase produced by the ACNR cells of the sublingual gland having a pH optimum of 4. So it is not triggered till arriving the acidic situation of the stomach. Calicrin, an enzyme that proteolytically splits high molecular weight kininogen to form bradykinin which is a vasodilator. It is released by the ACNR cells of the three major salivary glands. Then next is the antimicrobial enzymes lysoenzyme salivary lactoperoxidase lactoferrin immunoglobulin A then comes the proline rich proteins that has a role in enamel creation that is present in teeth calcium binding microbe death and uh, lubrication minor enzymes comprise salivary acid phosphatase A plus B N acetyl muramoil L aniline amidase NADPH dehydrogenase that is quinone superoxide dimutase glutathione transferase class 3 aldehyde dehydrogenase glucose 6 phosphate isomerase and tissue calicrin function unidentified then we have cells perhaps as numerous as 8 million human and 500 million bacterial cells per milliliter is present the existence of the bacterial products that is small organic acids amines and thiols causes the saliva to occasionally display foul odor. Opiorphrin, a recently investigated pain killing element established in the human saliva. Haptocorin, a protein which fixes to vitamin B12 to safeguard it besides the deprivation in the stomach. Previously, it binds to the intrinsic factor. In humans, the submandibular gland comprises nearly 70 to 75 percent of the secretions. Though the parotid gland discharges about 20 to 25 percent and small quantities are released from the other salivary glands. Secretion of saliva. The formation of saliva is done both by the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The saliva secreted by the sympathetic innervation is denser and saliva secreted by the parasympathetic nervous system is further watery. Sympathetic stimulation of the saliva is to assist respiration but parasympathetically this stimulation is to assist the digestion. Parasympathetic stimulation pointers to acetylcholine or the ACH discharge onto the salivary ACNR cells. ACH fixes to mucarinic receptors, precisely M3 receptors, and create an improved intracellular calcium ion concentration by the IP3. DAG second messenger system. Amplified calcium causes the vesicles inside the cells to fuse with the apical cell membrane prominent to secretions. ACH also makes the salivary gland to discharge calicrine, an enzyme that transforms kininogen to lysyl bradykinin. Lysyl bradykinin turns upon the blood vessels and capillaries of the salivary glands to produce vasodilation and enlarged capillary permeability individually. The resultant amplified blood flow to the acini allows making of more saliva. Further constituent P 
fixes to tachykinin NK1 receptors forming to increased intracellular calcium concentrations and then the amplified saliva secretion. At the end, both parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous secretion can lead to myoepithelial contraction, which forms the expulsion of simulation from the secretory acinus into the ducts and eventually to the oral cavity. The sympathetic stimulation results in the release of norepinephrine. Norepinephrine binding to alpha adrenergenic receptors will cause an upsurge in the intracellular calcium levels leading to more fluid versus the protein secretion. In norepinephrine binds to beta androgenic receptors. It would result in additional protein or enzyme simulation versus the fluid secretion. The secretion of norepinephrine originally decreases the blood flow to the salivary glands due to the constriction of the blood vessels but this effect is overtaken by vasodilation caused by various local vasodilators. Starch iodide test. It is a fact that iodine reacts with the starch or the complex carbohydrate and develops a dark blue color. On the other hand, the monosaccharides or the disaccharides do not react with iodine and develop color. These facts are utilized in this trick to identify the presence of saliva. Saliva contains amylase which breaks down starch into monosaccharides or disaccharides. The test can be carried out in a starch containing agarose gel with sample wells. The question sample is then loaded into the sample well. The gel is incubated and then stained with an iodine solution. The starch containing gel is stained blue. If amylase is present in the sample, that is due to saliva, it diffuses out of the sample well and cleaves the starch in the gel as it diffuses. A clear area around the sample well indicates the amylase activity. Fadipa's test. This test is based on the fact that the amylase digests the starch. The Fadipa's reagent consists of a dye cross-linked with the starch. The presence of saliva digests the starch and releases the dye from the complex. The solution thus becomes blue in color. This indicates the presence of saliva. The test can be used as a quantitative test by measuring the intensity of the developed color at 620 nanometers of wavelength. A standard concentration curve of known concentration of the colored dye may be prepared and used for the quantitative data. Immunochromatographic test. Commercially developed immunochromatographic kits are available for testing saliva samples. The method is based on the antigen antibody interaction principle. One such kit is known as RSID saliva kit. One such kit is known as the RSID saliva kit. The presence of saliva can be ascertained by the appearance of pink line in the RSID saliva kit. This technique can detect saliva as low as 1 microliter. RNA based test. Mouth contains cells that are very specific to it. These cells contain specific protein coding genes that render them to be exclusively identified. Two such genes are the HTN3 and STATH. 
the HTN3 gene encodes for the histone 3 protein which is involved in the defense mechanism in oral cavity. The STATH encodes the statrin which prevents the precipitation of the calcium phosphate salts in salivary glands. It is a fluid that is saliva is a fluid which largely comprises of water with little amount of electrolyte and enzyme. Saliva is a fluid largely composed of water with little amount of electrolyte and enzymes. Saliva tests can reveal certain disease markers, viral infections and the presence of therapeutic as well as illicit drugs in the body. Saliva may also contain the buccal mucosa cells. It is possible to identify the DNA profile of the person in question using the advanced DNA profiling techniques. Saliva contains amylase which breaks down starch into monosaccharides or disaccharides. Alpha amylase or tylen produced by the acinar cells of the parotid and the submandibular glands initiates the absorption of starch. Calicrin is an enzyme that prototypically splits the high molecular weight kininogen to release the bradykinin which is a vasodilator. Haptocorin, a protein which fixes to vitamin B12 to safeguard it besides the degradation in the stomach and earlier it fixes to the intrinsic factor. Both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous stimulation can result in the myoepithelium contraction which creates the exclusion of simulation from the secretory acinus into the ducts and eventually to the oral cavity. The Fadiba's reagent consists of a dye cross-linked with the starch. The presence of saliva can be ascertained by the appearance of pink line in the RSID saliva kit. The two such genes that are present are the HTN3 and the STATH. The HTN3 encodes the histone 3 protein which is involved in the defense mechanism of the oral cavity.